Hello, Princeton friends. I'm Jen Daniels of the class of 1993. And on behalf of the PICS Alumni Advisory Council, it is my great privilege to welcome you all to this webinar. Before our program officially begins, please note that this session is being recorded and that we encourage you to share any questions through the Q&A feature, knowing that we have reserved time at the end of the formal remarks for all participants to answer your questions. Our purpose this evening is to share the story of the PICS program and its integral role in engaging alumni to expand access to meaningful service opportunities for Princeton students. Since its inception, immediately following the class of 69's 25th reunion, PICS has supported well in excess of 1,500 student interns who in turn have supported countless community partners engaged on the front line in tackling society's most compelling civic issues. And while civic service has always been important, during these challenging times when the consequences of structural inequalities are increasingly evident, it is absolutely critical that we come together to support communities in need. Many of our PICS interns support community organizations that work directly with our most vulnerable populations, while others working in fields like healthcare, advocacy, government, and even the arts play an equally important role in creating systemic and enduring change in communities throughout our nation. And ways big and small, the PICS program truly embodies our university's informal motto in the service of humanity. Tonight, we've assembled a panel of dynamic speakers who will each share their PICS story as program leaders, faculty supporters, alumni volunteers, and perhaps most importantly, the community partners and students most affected by the PICS program. We've asked each individual to speak from the heart about why PICS matters to them. And when their for formal remarks end, we hope to engage with each of you more personally, whether through our Q&A session or more personalized outreach to identify the ways you might like to connect with PICS. As I said, tonight is about telling stories. And who better to kick off our conversation than the inaugural class of 1969 PICS program director, Dr. Caroline Savage, who, along with program coordinator Rose Holton, is responsible for all aspects of the PICS program, supporting students, community partners, and alumni in their quest to make the world a better place. Before coming to PICS, Caroline focused specifically on sustainability for more than 12 years. Most recently, she supported the Office of Sustainability's Campus as Lab program and the growing appetite for applied sustainability research on campus, scaling up the program to 300 projects with nearly equal engagement across Princeton's four academic colleges. Prior to Princeton, Caroline served as the director for the Institute for Community Sustainability at Indiana State University, where she developed several environmental justice programs and services. We are so fortunate to work with an impactful leader who combines an unparalleled passion for service with equal parts, compassion, and inspiration. Caroline. Thank you so much for that warm introduction, Jen. I really appreciate it. I'm really excited to be here today and talk with you a little bit about what is PICS and how uh, PICS makes an impact for social justice. So um, as you've heard, or maybe some of you already knew, um, stepping into this role, knowing that it comes from the great legacy of the class of 1969 who founded PICS um, at their 25th anniversary um, with the thought of, you know, how do they not just make an impact one time, but do something really powerful that it would impact generations to come, would inspire others actually to step forward um, for their own landmark commitments for leadership and for service. So we was really excited to step into this role, knowing that um, the year that I came was the year that PIX was transitioning um, from a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was run outside of the university um, to having reached the point um, where it, in its program where it had it developed a level of maturity um, that it really needed to join with the level of, uh, it needed to join with the university um, to increase the level of commitment that it had to serving students, community partners, and alumni, and to sustain this wonderful commitment that our class of 69 made um, into the long term for decades to come. Um, so stepping into this role, that was my charge. And definitely a couple of things came at us in 2020 that we weren't expecting, but um, really excited to see that the way it unfolded for our community partners and students and alumni, um, really just a lot of folks coming together and I think a, a more powerful impact than we even know knew would have been possible. 
Um, so for 2020, we had um, about 183 internships lined up ready to go before the pandemic hit. Um, and unfortunately, as a result of the pandemic, um, we were only able to proceed with 96 of those, but we thought that was pretty good, all things considered. So uh, those 96 internships did proceed virtually and we were excited to see those happen. Um, and I think the pandemic is actually, um, so there's where the 96 um, interns were um, all across uh, the US and internationally in their homes. Um, and I think um, it was actually really interesting year to have a transition happen um, because as we joined with the university and as we kind of joined at this critical moment where so much change was happening, um, we actually got to see in practice as we were going um, those really important synergies with other university programs. So um, for example, although we had so many students whose internships were unfortunately canceled because they could no longer safely take place during the pandemic, we were able to partner um, with Princeton's Pace Center for Civic Engagement to offer some of those students with canceled internships alternate opportunities, so some kind of mini grants and some kind of opportunities to do immersive student experiences. One of them you, may have, you might have heard of the RISE initiative, which was specifically addressing um, inequalities and how students could get involved in uh, service for, in their own local communities um, that address systemic inequalities. Um, so that was great for the students, then also able to turn around and offer that same opportunity to our community partners. Um, so some of our community partners weren't able to do anything at all this summer. Um, that was just the case with a lot of them. But for a lot of our other community partners, they had an increased need for student support. So we were able to put this opportunity out to our community partners as possible and able to give some folks some interns to help them amplify their existing work and um, make this year, um, make them equip them to be even stronger teams than they would have been without these partnerships. So that was really wonderful to see um, with everything that happened this year. Um, I think another thing we saw this year is that um, we have a really strong partnership with University Advancement um, as part of the university now, which is helping us to be more strategic and forward thinking than was possible when PIX was on its own. Um, and another great thing about um, being with Princeton is that we have really strong partnerships too with a bunch of offices, including um, Dean Gonzalez's offices and programs serving first year low income students. We have strong partnerships with the um, Office of Career Development. So really excited about this transition as a way um, to serve students, community partners and alumni in a way that was deeper than was possible before. Um, so I can also tell you a little bit about what makes PICS unique. Um, our PICS opportunities are all paid. Um, so students who apply for these internships know that they're going to have um, a stipend. Um, it's not a money-making scheme. It's only about $5,000 for the summer, depending on where students are located geographically. But the idea is it's a living wage and it makes the program truly accessible to all students. So, uh, you know, maybe a student who couldn't afford it doesn't have to think, you know, am I going to take this great opportunity to nonprofit and not be able to pay rent for the summer? We want them to be able to immerse themselves in a new community, to immerse themselves in a new organization um, and know that they're going to be able to still feed themselves at the end of the day. Um, so that's one great thing about PICS. Um, I think another great thing is that it makes professional development opportunities available. Um, we've Even this summer when um, we weren't able to meet in person, spent a lot of time with students um, giving workshops on um, you know, how to network, how to build your professional skills, doing coffee chats with some of our wonderful alumni partners who are willing to meet with students um, across the internet waves and have conversations with them that um, kind of are, go beyond the experiences they're having in their individual internships. And I think um, one of the key things that makes PICS different from other programs, um, definitely Princeton, and I think even nationally and internationally, is that alumni are really the beating heart of our program. Um, this really sets us apart. Almost all of the PICS internships that we have are sourced in some way, shape, or form from Princeton alumni. Um, and most of the internships that we have are also funded by alumni, uh, uh, generous alumni uh, donations. So really grateful for that support that makes these internships possible. Um, our students all get paired with an alumni mentor and through that mentorship um, experience throughout the summer, they get an introduction to what it means to be a part of the Princeton community and kind of this thought of how can they use this network, particularly for students who might not come from families or from other backgrounds where those kinds of connections were available to them. It's really important to us that we use that summer as an opportunity to link um, young Tigers with the alumni network that we know they have that can help sustain their careers over the long term. Um, so with that in mind, how does PICS make an impact for social justice, kind of why we're all here? Um, so I can say personally, one of the main things that attracted me to PICS last year when I came on board um, was, as Jen mentioned, I have been working in sustainability for several years. And even though there's a huge need in that community to focus more on social justice, I found that I kind of personally didn't have the positional leverage I would need to really make an impact um, for some of those changes that I wanted to see for social justice at scale. So I was really drawn in by the careful work that both PICS alumni and staff had done um, over the past several years, not only to make these opportunities truly accessible for all students, but also to build long-term relationships with community partners who were experts in the work that was needed uh, to serve marginalized communities. I think this is really important and it makes me really proud to work at PICS because uh, we've traditionally focused on that long-term relationship building process that service isn't just a one-off thing um, and that you know we have narratives that put our community partners 
um, at the center of their own story. So we're not trying to do that storytelling for them and, and giving them a voice for what they do. So in terms of PICS students, um, what, when we talk about social justice and students, um, PICS um, demographics for serving Princeton students are actually better than the university overall. Um, so we usually have about 27% of our PICS students are first generation low income students. That compares to about 18% of Princeton students overall that are first year low income students. We also serve about 70% uh, students who identify as students of color versus about 56% of undergraduates. That's the student body overall. So 27% versus 18% and 70% versus 56%. We, we're pretty happy with those numbers and would love to keep it going um, to serve even more. Um, and for community partners as well, um, we have about 30% of our PICS internships are social justice focused, um, but the vast majority of our internships address social justice in some way, shape or form. So. For example, many of our medical internships wouldn't necessarily qualify as a social justice internship, but um, our medical internships work with our students and teach them about things like unequal care outcomes and things like that. And I think particularly this summer, but in past summer evaluations overall, we've seen a lot of comments from students that will say something to the effect of, you know, even if my internship didn't address, you know, X, Y, and Z particular social justice theme, I really saw that borne out. My mentor really worked with me to make sure that I understood the larger systemic processes at play. Um, and to talk a little bit about our alumni as well and how they're connected to this. Again, as I mentioned, um, they're the core of our program, um, what really sets PICS apart. Um, there are a variety of ways the alumni have made a difference for students and community partners and social justice. And um, I want to turn the uh, microphone over uh, shortly. I know I don't have a lot of time now, so I'll spend some time at the end talking about specifically how as an alum you can make an impact for this. Um, but I know that um, you know, serving as mentors, community uh, partnerships, sourcing those, helping us get new community partners, um, donating to support internships, and hosting regional events and gatherings are a couple of the ways that our alumni have helped us um, to make this program really robust and to help it serve all the students and community partners that it does. So uh, I know I'm running out of time, but I'll say a little bit more about that at the end. And uh, now it's my honor to introduce one of our wonderful alumni from the great class of 1969. Um, Mr. Chuck Freyer, who's the chairman of the board for the PICS Alumni Advisory Council. Uh, Mr. Freyer's legacy of service actually spans decades and he has touched thousands of lives. In addition to his many years serving on the board of PICS, he's also sponsored internships, he's served as an alumni mentor, he's helped us find new community partner organizations, he's really done it all. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Freyer. Thanks Caroline, for, again a very gracious uh, introduction. And thanks to everybody who has connected with us tonight and I hope you go away having learned a lot and feeling very good about what PICS is doing uh, in the Princeton community and, and much broader in the U US community. I was privileged to lead PICS the last 11 years and oversee the transition to being a year university program while preserving, as Caroline said, an essential role for the alumni in the future of the program. The PICS Alumni Advisory Council that Caroline referred to is, is the vehicle for that. And it's been described as a friends group on steroids. It's, can, has a very broad constituency, including uh, former PICS board members from when we were a separate entity, uh, other key alumni uh, representatives, including uh, members of each of the uh, alumni affiliated groups, Princeton faculty, Princeton staff, former interns, intern parents, and leaders of several of the host organizations or community partners that take Princeton in, PICS interns in the summer. Our role is to be a force multiplier for Caroline and her staff in as many aspects of the program as we can, including the things that she's referred to, but bear repeating, uh, helping source new internships, raising funding for the stipends, interviewing student applicants, finding and serving as alumni partners for the interns to help build intergenerational bridges and introduce them to the alumni body overall. Um, during this transition period over the prior year, we built a very strong partnership with the alumni, with Caroline rather, and the rest of the PACE staff. And I assure you they are doing a tremendous job for the program and for the students. If you'd like to be involved, become involved with the Alumni Advisory Council or any of its activities that I mentioned, just reach out to Caroline or look me up on TigerNet and we'll be more than happy to uh, see if we can integrate you into the, uh, into the program. Now, my, my pleasure to introduce Professor Miguel Centeno. Professor Centeno is Musgrave Professor of Sociology and Vice Dean of Princeton School of Public and International Affairs, what we knew as the Wilson School in the past. He's also one of the most popular teachers at Princeton. 
served as a PICS board member for a number of years and now serves on our uh, uh, Alumni Advisory Council Board of Advisors. Pertinent to tonight's program, Professor Centennial is the founder of the Princeton University Preparatory Program known as PUP. It's a rigorous academic and cultural enrichment program that helps high achieving low income high school students from local districts prepare for admission to and ongoing success within selective colleges and universities. More broadly, for two, for two decades, uh, Professor Centeno has been involved in efforts to diversify both the student body and the faculty at Princeton. Additionally, he serves on the board of the Latin American Legal Defense and Education Fund. Professor Centeno. Hello, thank you so much, Chuck, and thank you, Caroline and Rosemary, for, for the invitation. I wanna make clear that what you see behind me is just a screensaver. Uh, Princeton does not pay me enough to have a house overlooking the Pacific Ocean somewhere on the California coast, uh, just in case any of you were wondering. Um, listen, this is simple. Uh, PIX is good for the world. It's good for our students. And yes, even it's good for faculty and, and alumni. Uh, PIX is based on the idea of, of giving back. I, I used to give a speech where I said that everybody involved with Princeton might be worthy, but we were certainly very, very lucky. Uh, and luck comes with a certain duty. Uh, we ought, whether you're, you're an undergraduate here, a graduate student, staff, but certainly faculty. I always tell my colleagues in other universities that being employed by Princeton, it, it's like being a kid in a candy factory. Uh, and I, I'm very aware of, of, of the luck, the sheer luck of just being here. So it's important to give back. And, and service is especially important in these times. Uh, you know, we, we, we might not see a lot of the literally millions of people who are suffering. They're suffering physically, their families have maybe even sustained a, a loss. Uh, there's unemployment. Uh, when I hear people, again, complain about having to wear a mask, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Um, we you know most of us have jobs. Uh, most of us are healthy. And again, this is an important way of just giving back. Um, now, the, the students are helping out in the thousand and one micro ways we need to make a, a better world. Uh, what, one of the things I love about PIX is that these are ground level efforts. This isn't about some pie in the sky, let's make the world better, et cetera, et cetera. This is about helping people one-on-one, -on -one, uh, assuring that services can be delivered, assuring that, that medical care is being delivered, assuring that teaching is being done well. So no matter what your politics or your preferences might be, know that these students are actually doing uh, good in, 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 a, in a very clear way. And <laughs> And I serve on the board because I think it's so important for Princeton to do this kind of activity and to allow students the opportunity to explore alternative careers. Um, I, I went to a Catholic school, so I have lots of Catholic guilt uh, and I feel I have to earn my oxygen. Uh, earn, you know, working with PICS is a way of earning my, my, my oxygen. Uh, this is particularly important for first generation students they might not have the luxury of, of doing good things during the summer. I remember as an undergraduate, uh, I was a driver for a bank. Uh, believe me, I, I, made a ma I made enough money so I could do my summer support, et cetera, but I wasn't expanding my horizons in any way uh, or, or, or another. Uh, lots of folks have to do these boring jobs PICS is a way of making sure that they might want to just choose to go back home. They might want to just chill and work for a pizzeria or whatever during the summer. But if they want an exciting position, mix, mix, uh, PICS makes it possible. And I want to keep emphasizing that. We've all heard over the last couple of years or the last five or six years, the unfairness of a lot of internships. Internships are unpaid. Well, you guys who, know par who are parents and I know, that unpaid is expensive. Uh, working unpaid costs a lot of money. And PIX makes a really big difference, making it possible for these students to do what they want. Uh, it's also important for students who have not witnessed or experienced some of these situations. Uh, this isn't about poverty tourism. I wanna make sure that this isn't just about, look, let's go somewhere and take a picture of it. 
This is about realizing what it means if you go into a hospital and you can't pay or you don't speak English or you, you don't have some set of, of, of qualifications that are gonna get you, uh, that are gonna get you service. Uh, this is, this is you know, just, it, it's a little similar to Teach for America. I've always thought that ta Teaching for America, yes, there was an important value in what the students contributed, et cetera, Teach for America and other Princeton product. But it was also important because once those students taught in those poor urban districts or those rural districts, they never forgot it. They never, they never took education for granted. They didn't think that education was something that everybody uh, uh, could get. Uh, for all students, uh, PICS is also a great opportunity to strengthen relationships with alumni and especially with their alumni mentor. Uh, I hate to say this, those of you who are out there who are alums, I unfortunately went to a small school in New Haven, Connecticut, uh, 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 the, 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 you know, your, their alums are this distant figure. They, they show up in May and, and all of this, and they've got their tiger tails and all this kind of stuff. But for most undergraduates, they're never going to experience an alum. This is a way of making sure that we start creating that bond between the current students and, and the alumni. Uh, everybody benefits. Uh, the students, the adults, the organizations that, that get the, these interns. Uh, at, at SPIA, one of the things we teach the students is that policy is all about trade-offs. You can't have you know, all, all good for everybody. You have to choose. Well, PICS is one of those win-win situations. For a relatively small amount of money, you, people can do an incredible amount of good and benefit not just the university, not individual lot, not just individual lives, not individual students, but lots of folks in the community. So thank you so much for creating PICS, Chuck, and, and, and being part of it. And thank you all for your support and your interest. Thank you, Professor Centennial, for those insightful comments and for all that you do for the PICS program. And now that you've heard from a lot of us about why PICS is special to us, I think the true test of where the rubber meets the road is in the feedback that we hear from students who've been interns, as well as the community partners who posted those interns. So now we'll turn our attention uh, to Mary Kim from the class of 19 and Jerma Lisa Ferrer from the class of 22, who will share their PICS stories. Both Mary and Jermalisa also participated in the Student Advisory Council, or SAC, so that they have opportunities to continue growing their leadership skills beyond their summer internships, and also as ambassadors to recruit new groups of students to the PICS internship process. We're very grateful to have both of them joining us this evening, and I'll just give two introductions up front. First, Mary Kim is a graduate of the class of 2019 and studied English literature during her time at Princeton. She was a PICS intern at the Curtis Institute, Institute of Music in the summer of 2018. And after graduating, she was the 19 to 20 PICS student program coordinator and worked to coordinate the internship cycle for summer 2020 as well. Jermalisa Ferrer, class of 22, is a pre-law student who is originally from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. She is majoring in sociology and earning certificates in neuroscience, African-American studies, and Latin American studies. We're so grateful to both Mary and Jermalisa for spending time with us this evening and sharing their pick stories. Mary, thank you for coming. Thank you so much, Jen, for that introduction. Um, so hello, everyone. I'm Mary. And as Jen said, I was a PICS intern in 2018. And last year, I was lucky to have the opportunity to serve as the PICS st uh, student program coordinator for the uh, 1920 school year. Um, so right off the bat, I think one of the most amazing things about PICS is the variety and breadth of the types of internship it offers. And directly related to that is the broad way that it conceives of civic service to incorporate different sectors, fields, and interests. For me personally, uh, my background is deeply rooted in classical music um, as I was a kid in college um, and even now. And so uh, after, in my junior year, when I saw that PICS was offering an internship with the Curtis Institute of Music, one of the most highly acclaimed classical music conservatories in the world, I knew that I had to apply. Um, I had not seen this kind of opportunity advertised anywhere else um, through a different Princeton program or otherwise. 
And I'm so glad that I applied. I'm so glad that I was able to participate in that internship um, as that summer was truly instrumental in helping me orient what I wanted my next steps to be professionally. So at Curtis, um, as an administrative intern, I was privy to the behind the scenes of Curtis's summer programs. Uh, while Curtis itself is an institution for higher education, its summer programs are really aimed towards younger students um, in the middle school, high school uh, demographics. And so as an intern at Curtis, I was able to sit in on conversations between higher level representatives of the organization where they discussed uh, long-term strategies to reach underrepresented students and to encourage them to become prospective applicants for their programs. Uh, among those discussions were also how to source and fund and sustain scholarship opportunities uh, for young talent in communities that they had historically overlooked. And this was really impactful and powerful and compelling for me um, because I saw that Curtis was looking to enact positive, meaningful change uh, within the classical music world, where they specifically are so uniquely posited to make an impact and to make waves. And I was able to be an important part of that process through my internship at PICS. Um, my PICS internship was also really vital for me um, as it provided me with a really important uh, perspective shift. So previously, all of my uh, experiences with civic service had been all very on the ground, face to face with the demographics that we were serving. My um, experience uh, through my PIGS internship um, in the admin world really affirmed for me my administrative and organizational capabilities. And it helped me start to conceive of what a real career in nonprofit work might look for me specifically and the skill sets that I had. And so it was truly a no brainer for me to apply uh, for the student program coordinator position when it became available toward the end of my senior year. I was so thrilled to be able to work for an organization that I felt had provided me with so much. And so as the student program coordinator uh, last year, a big part of my job and really one of my favorite parts of the job was speaking with students and helping to direct them to pick internships that I thought might be a good match for them and their interests. And so when students came to me uh, to talk about their different internship opportunities, uh, we'd go over their resumes and their skill sets. They'd tell me about their interests and their aspirations for the future. And we'd talk about what they wanted to accomplish that summer um, and even the next four years at Princeton. And I was struck time and time again by the passion of these students. And truly, I was so grateful in those moments that PICS existed and that we could provide for them important, meaningful professional experiences for these wonderful, bright, inquisitive students. And so hearing about their internships um, over the summer um, and in the fall, when they were telling me what they learned about civic service, what they learned about themselves, they were telling me how they'd grown throughout the summers and how their aspirations changed and how they stayed the same. Uh, it was so, so fulfilling um, and it reinforced over and over again for me the importance of PICS um, and why we work so hard to make this a program available for our undergrad students. Um, and with that, I'd love to turn the page over to Jermalisa. Thank you, Mary. And thank you so much to Jen and everyone for organizing this and for coming out. Um, I just wanted to get into like a little bit about like my internship over the summer of 2019. So I interned at a local nonprofit called Arm in Arm. Yes, the lovely pictures. Uh, so at Arm in Arm, I worked as both a data intake intern and also has a student coordinator. So my job entitled basically just making sure that our pantry ran every day and taking and take interviews from um, local community members who needed access to food and housing help. And a lot of our additional work included setting up a summer food program for kids in the neighborhood and making sure that they had access to food because they could no longer attain um, food from their normal schools throughout, like they did throughout the school year. So I think that for me, PICS um, has meant a lot of things. It's been a transition for me from my high school self into my Princeton self because I ironically found out about PICS through uh, Vice President Calhoun. I met her in um, a dinner that they had and she, I was talking to her about my passion for community service and the challenges that I faced as a first-generation student because 
as Professor Santano mentioned, um, oftentimes you, especially as a first generation student, you do not have the option to go into nonprofit work because you simply don't have the resources and you have to counter the weight of being financially stable versus pursuing your passions. And so I had this amazing conversation with Phoebe Calhoun and she suggested that I take a look at PICS and that I take a look at some of the internships that were offered. When I saw the opportunity to um, be a student intern at Arm in Arm, I was frankly amazed because I am from Haiti and I've lived in Trenton and I've always wanted to find different ways to tackle poverty within my community. And one of the ways that I thought I could do this is by going away and like gaining a Princeton education and then eventually coming back and helping serve my community. I did not think that I could intersect being a student at Princeton with still being able to help my community. And I think that PICS offered that unique opportunity that simply did not exist for me coming into Princeton. Um, within my job at Arm in Arm, I found out that first, the levels of poverty that I had perceived in my community were so much greater than I thought. And that second, my hopes to become a lawyer and to actually find a way to solve some of these issues could not simply be, it's, it's not simply something that was attainable, but it was something that sh I should do my best at attaining. And that was vital to attain because otherwise cycles would repeat. Um, and I say this because as a student intern at Arm and Arm, one of the first striking things that hit me were the stories that a lot of community members were telling me when they came in for their intake interviews. It is completely, it is something else to watch someone tell you that they do not have food at their table and that is why they're walking two miles in the rain to come get food from the pantry. It is something else to hear a mother tell you that their, them and their family members are going to be kicked out of their house because they had to plan a funeral. And I think that the unique opportunity to be there as a student and as a student who had hopes to, to go on to um, law school after this and to go on to help solve some of the legal systems that we had, like that really solidified for me in that moment because I saw so many people who just did not simply know, one, the rights that they had within the American justice system, which is, striking in the within um, housing court but two I also saw the opportunity to do work and vital work as a student and because of that I although I ended my um, PICS internship in the summer of 2019 after my freshman year uh, I went on to volunteer and I still volunteer at Arm in Arm on a monthly basis and try to give back to this community because I think that PIX does something that's very unique where it showed me that yes, one, it is possible to do work as a student, but two, it is possible to do work that actually impacts the day-to-day -day lives of community members in communities that you that don't simply need the help, but that you also care about. And I think that sets PIX apart from any other programs that set my PIX experience apart from any other program. And I hope that you all will consider giving to this wonderful institution. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Mary and Jermalisa for those wonderful stories of community impact and hearing the impact that PIX has had upon you. Um, incredibly touching. And now um, we'd like to hear from the other side. We've heard from the students and now to hear from a community partner about the impact of PIX interns in her organization. So I'm thrilled to welcome Rukia Ross, the class of 14, and a fellow member of the PICS uh, Alumni Advisory Council. Um, Rukia is um, a member of Princeton's class of 2014, as well, and began her career as an analyst supporting the private equity arm at Goldman Sachs in compliance matters. While at Goldman, she attended a number of talks about social entrepreneurship, which grew her interest in working at an entrepreneurial mission-oriented organization. Rukia went on to join Springboard Collaborative, a Philadelphia-based education nonprofit. She is now the Vice President of Business Strategy at Springboard, 
responsible for budgeting and planning, financial strategy, legal issues, HR, communications, and operations. And she has been a wonderful community partner and host to Princeton Internships and Civic Service Interns. And Rukia, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Jen. I'm so excited to be here today um, and just really enjoyed hearing those student experiences also. Uh, I get to talk with students a lot, actually, who are our interns, but it's always great to just be reminded of the experience. Um, I'm going to talk super briefly, just uh, a little personally about my transition from uh, for-profit to nonprofit, um, why I support PICS, and then what it's like to be a community partner uh, and the experience I've had with PICS that I've interned at the organization that I work for. Um, so just starting talking a little bit about my pivot from the for-profit world to the nonprofit world, um, I had a pretty memorable transition, I would say. Um, I started my career around the same time of the first Black Lives Matter um, protest and, and the movement that began. Um, and so I found myself often sitting at my office, quite literally watching, uh, you know, planes go by of signs, uh, I can't breathe uh, in memory of Eric Garner and kind of thinking about what I was doing to contribute to, to my community um, and how I wanted to be able to do something more um, for me uh, and for the communities that I really cared about. Um, so that's what ended up making me start this journey that has been a really wonderful journey. Uh, and the transition definitely took some realignment and patience. Um, in my experience, I found that communication was very different from my organization. So when I joined a, no a nonprofit, um, there were a lot more smileys and exclamations. Uh, I'm sure that that's not true across the industry, but one of the things that really stood out to me actually as I was transitioning uh, was just these different in like culture. Um, how do we navigate spaces? How can we communicate? What are topics that we can talk about, right? Um, again, protests were happening outside of my office building and they were never discussed. Uh, and suddenly I was in an organization where we talked about those things. We talked about it openly. We talked about how that was impacting the families and the students that we served. Um, and I personally found that very uh, fulfilling. Um, also big transition, I went to much smaller organizations. So I went from an organization of about 30,000 to an organization of six when I was hired. Um, and so I had to build and create a lot of things on my own. Um, there were a lot of learning curves, uh, but I learned a lot really quickly. Um, and I was very fortunate that early in my tenure, I was introduced to PICS from, a, from the community partner perspective. Um, since I've been at Springboard, we have always had PICS interns. Um, I like the number of ways that they have added value to our organization that is still at our organization, uh, even uh, almost five years later for some of the interns. Um, it's really a great experience to be able to have new perspectives, uh, you know, when you're always in the day to day, head down, really focused on, on working and stretching resources, having new points of views and perspectives come in are um, is really helpful and, and valuable. Um, and when I think about some of the interns that we've had who have come back in different varieties. So they've come back not through PICS. Uh, we had an intern, former PICS intern, who worked for us this summer and just like really grueling hours as we were responding as an education nonprofit um, to uh, COVID and virtual learning and all those things like many of us in the education sector have, have transitioned to. Uh, but it was just so wonderful to think like, wow, this started from when you were an intern and I've been able to see your growth and the experiences and opportunities that you've had. Um, and that's really why I support PICS. Uh, I think that the hands-on and real experience that interns often get because often organizations are, you know, under-resourced and, and they, there's real work that needs to be done on the ground. Um, it's really valuable. Uh, and I just love that PICS encourage students to do work that they're passionate about and that can transform communities um, from inside. Um, at my organization in particular, um, we've also had interns that have had a lot of work within social justice, of course. Uh, our mission is ultimately to close the opportunity gap for the scholars that we serve. Um, and so PICS interns have gotten to directly work with families and with teachers and with students uh, and learn about what are the challenges that are being faced even outside the classroom, right? That's really important for us also. How can we make sure that we're nourishing the whole child and the family? And, PICS interns have had the opportunity to do that work directly uh, at times when I'm sure it felt overwhelming, um, but where they were able to make a, a real 
change. Um, and the intern that we had this summer, actually, uh, because of COVID, we transitioned to a totally internal role. Uh, and our intern got to work directly with our president on uh, our strategic plan for the next couple of years. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity to do um, long term, really substantial work for these organizations because it's really needed. Um, the last thing I would just touch on quickly is um, if I were an alum, which I am, how would I advise other alum uh, how they can get involved with uh, PICS? And I think a number of people have already said it, but I would just repeat, um, a lot of internships are sourced by alumni. So if you know of any organizations that you think would be a good fit, like let them know about the program, encourage them to uh, to apply for an, in an intern. Um, if you can donate, of course, um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the interns are sponsored by the program. And we actually had an opportunity where we had an intern who needed just a little bit more additional funding and we were able to work with PICS to get that person the additional funding that they needed. So that's really important to us that we are able to have interns take these opportunities uh, and not let resources uh, be a, a detriment or, or a barrier for them. Um, that's all I have to share. Thank you for this time. I really love PICS and so I love to get an opportunity to talk about it with other people who love PICS also. Thank you so much, Rukia. And we are so, so grateful for you. I don't know um, how many of you are kind of grappling with the shift to virtual that so many folks uh, dealt with in, uh, in March and April, but um, it was really a huge, huge lift for our community partners to not only shift their own operations, but also to make the commitment to us and say, yes, we're still gonna take a student intern and yes, it's still important for us to have that student work with us and learn and make an impact. So we're so, so grateful to Rukia and Springboard for making that shift and for coming on board and, and being willing to sustain that commitment into this strange, crazy, terrible, whichever adjective we're using today here. Um, but I do, so we've talked about a lot of different ways that we can make an impact, um, and I want to go over them. Um, so you have an idea of you know, kind of from wherever you sit, um, what's a good way for you to make an impact um, from where you're standing? And I'm going to go over a lot of options, but um, don't worry, you don't have to take notes. Actually, at the end of this call, probably right about six o'clock, you'll have um, an email hitting your inbox um, with a form where you can actually indicate interest in any of these options. So um, for students, how can you make an impact for social justice? Apply to PICS. We'd love for you to be an intern. Um, we're currently going through kind of the finishing touches of getting together our slate of community partners for 2021. So our internships are going to post um, on October 30th. Um, so when you get your form, you can just let us know you're interested in applying to an internship and we'll send you a reminder. You can also sign up to become a member of the PIC Student Advisory Council. Um, I think this is really important this year, maybe more than ever, because we're really looking to this group for student feedback about how can we meet student needs in this year when so much is different, so much is not the same. How can we continue to be responsive when we're not all physically in the same place? And we as, as PIC staff and alums don't have the same ability to touch and connect as we might uh, in normal times. Um, so that's a quick overview for students. For community partners, let us know when we can bring interns to you. We'd love to do this. Um, you know, for this year, um, our internships late, as I mentioned, we're kind of in the finishing stages of it. Um, but uh, even though we're finishing that up, um, because just because of the timing of the academic year, we want these uh, opportunities to be competitive with other, uh, maybe more lucrative opportunities students might uh, be offered so they don't feel like they have to choose between the two. Um, so with that, our timeline is always a little bit tight as we get into the fall and it always feels so soon. Um, so with that in mind, we're finishing up for this year. Um, we do have a little bit of flexibility for internships that either come with funding or maybe where there's um, an alumni donor already identified or a few other special cases. So I do know that many of our um, stalwart community partners when we reach out um, to ask for 2021 internships um, weren't able to participate because so much is in flux this year. Um, but if you have ideas for internships that might um, already come with funding um, or to whom I might want to reach out for our 2022 cycle, we've already had a couple of community partners that said, you know, feel free to contact us in 2022 and things settle out a bit. Um, please, community partners, let us know um, and getting into what our alumni can do. Um, one of the great ways that alumni can get involved is by being a mentor. Um, we're very excited each year to pair PIC students with an individual alumni mentor who can help guide their career path and can, who can help introduce them uh, to the Princeton Alumni Network. Um, so many PIC mentorships actually extend for years beyond a student's initial internship. Um, which is great. But if that sounds a little bit intimidating, one shorter term opportunity that might interest you um, is to just host a regional gathering. Um, we hope that our 2021 internships can take place in person. Um, in the before times, um, our alumni um, in various cities would host, you know, kind of backyard barbecues and other great events to 
welcome interns to what for oftentimes was a new city that those interns were landing in to have their PICS experience. Um, our vision is that we'll all be able to be in person again this year. Um, so if you're interested in hosting a regional gathering, we hope those can take place maybe in your backyard or some community amenity near you. Um, but even if this isn't possible, like I mentioned, we did host some wonderful virtual, virtual gatherings this summer and we'll be open to maybe a mix of those next year, depending on what's right for you. Um, another great way you can help us, I mentioned sourcing internships. Um, we have um, this really unique aspect again that most of these internships we have come with some kind of alumni connection. So as I mentioned, wrapping up a little bit for this year, but whether you have some you know kind of special cases that we might want to investigate that might come with funding um, or whether you have some folks that we should get on our radar for 2022, please feel free to reach out and let us know. Um, another great way that you can make a difference is by funding. Again, the vast majority of our internships are actually made possible through generous alumni gifts, um, both from individual donors and from Princeton classes that are standing together to make a difference. Um, and especially because we've worked really hard to partner with these organizations who focus on social justice and community development, oftentimes it's the case that their budgets are fairly small. So not only does your gift to pick support a life-changing service experience for students, but you're also multiplying the impact of a community partner because a lot of times they can't afford to bring on the extra staff. So. Um, and I can add also that PICS usually sees about 600 applicants for about 200 positions, and we expect um, the number of applicants to be even higher this year than ever before. So we'd love to better be able to meet student demand. Um, and now that we're part of the university, we do also have that great university advancement partnership I mentioned to help us identify um, endowed donors to sustain the program in the long term. But for the immediate future, alumni are going to play a critical role in making sure that we have the term funding we need to support internships now. Um, so I can show you just briefly, there's a quick list of um, some internship opportunities that are available that are making an, an impact for social justice if anyone's interested happy to share this list after the call with anybody who maybe marks that box um, and then i had one more point on the um, slide about how you can make a difference but i'll just leave this list up while i tell you about volunteering to serve on the alumni advisory council um, because this is a great group this is a really active engaged community that provides support for um, picks in a lot of ongoing ways so recently our alumni advisory council helped us to review all the community partner applications for 2021 um, and made recommendations about where we should offer internships. Um, in the winter, our Alumni Advisory Council has volunteered to interview students as part of the interview selection process. So um, this is a really great opportunity, especially if you're looking for new ways to connect with the Princeton community uh, during this time when connection looks very different than it has in the past. Um, so that's another great way you can get involved as well. And um, I can just kind of close this by saying that um, partnering with the university has allowed us to do so much more with the resources that we have. And on that note, your contributions, whether that's time, talent, treasure, um, whatever might be a good fit for you, go farther than ever before. Um, so with that, now I'd like to introduce um, an alum who has really stepped up in a huge way to make an impact for uh, uh, social justice, for service, for students, for Princeton, for everything, to share his experience. So I'm very pleased and honored to introduce Duncan Van Dusen of the great class of 92. Um, who's the PICS Alumni Advisory Council Development Chair. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. And thank you, everybody else. Uh, my only complaint is next time I do a webinar with you guys, I'm going to insist on going first because uh, my, I've had to keep re erasing and rewriting talking points. I think you guys have pretty much uh, said it all about PICS and, and you have such authentic voices and there's, and, there's, and there's so many great things to say. So I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what I can add, but I, I will try. So first of all, um, you know, our involvement, uh, the class of 92's involvement with PICS really started from, you know, the midlife crisis that happens when you pass your 25th reunion uh, and you suddenly realize that you're the older half of alumni. Um, and it's a moment in life where, you know, you're, you're focused for a long time on, on going back uh, and then you start to think about giving back. And so we spent uh, a couple of years after our 25th reunion really trying to zero in on what do we want to do as a class? What do we want our legacy to be? And there were a couple of things that we came up with as um, criteria. One is we really wanted to have something that would engage classmates. You know, life is not just about money. Our class is not just about money. And it's great to start a scholarship. But at the end of the day, all you alumni and classmates can really do with that is write a check. So we wanted to, in the spirit of you know, the university's combination of alumni relations and, and donations development uh, into engagement, we really wanted to do something that would engage a broad swath of the class. The second criteria was we really wanted to have something that was related to social justice and that was meaningfully advancing social justice and a lot has been said on that and I probably cannot add a lot uh, you know, on that point. 
I think you're gonna see where this is going. Uh, the third criteria that we had is we really wanted to have something that was efficient with classmates time and money where they could make a very concrete noticeable and big impact with small amounts of time or money. And then the final criteria is we wanted something that really connected not only to the university's general mission, but specific, specifically to what makes Princeton special and unique. And as I said, you could probably guess where this is going because PICS uh, covered all four of those criteria beautifully. So we decided that this was uh, the thing to do and we started the 92 Fund for Service, uh, which is going to fund uh, at least one, hopefully more, PICS interns every summer in perpetuity long after we're gone. So you know, as we were thinking about this problem, Caroline touched on something which I think is very interesting, which is um, PIX is really, there's three ingredients to PIX. There's students, there's host organizations, some of who can pay for their own student, but many who can't. And then there's money for, for the portion of host organizations that can't. And to maximize PIX, we have to have all these three ingredients in equal supply. Well, Caroline and Mary and everyone else have done a great job recruiting students, and we've got students in great supply, 600 of them on average, and as Caroline says, it might easily be more this year. Uh, but we've historically only had, you know, 100 to 200 internships and, and enough money to support those. So there's a real opportunity to close that gap. And it's not a $2 billion gap. It's not a $200 million gap. It's not even a $20 million gap it's a $2 million gap. And with the resources that we all have as Princeton alumni, we can close that $2 million gap. And it's a 400 internship gap. And with the connections that 90,000 Princeton alumni have, we can close that 400 internship gap. So let's all, our class is, is digging in. Uh, we, in, in literally the, the two weeks since we announced this fund, we've raised $140,000 in pledges. And we've raised, I don't know, the tally changes every day, Caroline, but approximately 20 internships. In fact, we had two people in our class that are professional philanthropists uh, and have a whole portfolio of nonprofit companies. And each of them has contributed a couple of internships. So if 92 can do that in a matter of weeks, just think what all 80 classes put together can do in a matter of months or a year or two. So I'm gonna close just by reading two quotes. And, and the other thing you guys, many of you I'm sure on this call are probably uh, you know, class officers or in, or in class or, or other leadership positions. And you know how hard it is to do something that people will get involved in that will people will notice. So let me just, I got a lot of emails actually uh, from classmates, all of them positive uh, in the last couple of weeks. I'm gonna read two quotes that really struck me. So the first one says, this sends a Cupid, Cupid's arrow right to the heart of my personal purpose in life. I couldn't be more elated to know that we have chosen this way to focus our energy as a class family. Somewhere in the great P raid in the hereafter, all of my mentors from the class of 55 are surely giving a proud locomotive for this. That was a, a classmate of mine who, uh, as you can imagine, was, you know, was involved in project 55. And then here's the second uh, one that I'm gonna read. I really appreciate that the class is valuing, valuing multiple forms of contributing to the fund. Great idea for class involvement and great legacy for the class. So I think those two uh, said it better than anyone. The outpouring um, you know, support for picks from our class has been delightful. You know, and as a class officer, it is obviously a pleasure to have something that can mobilize the energies, time, money, and connections of classmates in such a productive way. And I'll just close by saying, while we were talking here, I got uh, a text from another class president who has said that her class, uh, the class of 2002 is stepping up and they are gonna support a uh, PIX intern in the summer of 2021. So thank you class of 02, that's awesome. And I hope many, many classes will continue to follow in your wake. Thank you, Duncan, for sharing your enthusiasm and the great response from the great class of 92 um, in support of PICS. And thank you to all of our panelists for sharing your stories um, about PICS. 
Uh, we are now ready to open up to any questions that um, members of our audience might have. And I will just read them and direct them to different participants, if I may. So our first question is actually directed to um, Mary, Jermalisa, and Rukia. PIX works hard to ensure that the projects interns are asked to do are sufficiently challenging to make the experience a win-win for the student and organization. How does PIX succeed? Does PIX succeed? Why don't we go, since, why don't we ask um, Rukia, why don't you jump in first? We'll hear from the, the community host perspective, community partner, and then Jermalisa and Mary. Sure, if I have to get my experience, having not actually done the work myself, but I would 100% say yes. Um, I worked much more closely this summer uh, than previous summers than I ever had with uh, a PIX intern. And I was like sometimes pretty surprised even by tasks that she was given. Um, her manager was out for a week and I kind of like checked in with her two weeks actually. I checked in with her manager before she was leaving. Like, do you need me to support? What, what, what do you need so I can help while you're out? She was like, no, I told her everything she's doing. She's going to work closely with uh, our president of the organization for the next two weeks. Um, and she just, she did that. And she, uh, to this day, there's still, um, I see her name all over Asana and in our emails and our Google Drive of all these things that she created during her time with us. So I would say 100%. <laughs> Mary and Jermalisa? Oh, yeah, I would say um, I would agree. Um, I think obviously every internship experience is unique and different. Um, but the staff at PIX um, throughout the summer, uh, when the interns are off um, at their internships, do a pretty good job of keeping um, in touch with the students, keeping in touch with the supervisors. Um, they do pulse checks a few times a summer to make sure that the students are getting what they want out of the experience, that um, the organizations um, and the supervisors are happy with the work that the students are doing. Um, and I wanna say over 99% of the time, it's it's a pretty, pretty good experience both ways. Yeah, I think that I definitely agree. And I'd just like to add on that PICS also does a really good job of um, training students going into these internships that the communities that they're going into are not at all um, communities that are meant to really be um, opportun opportunities for um, volunteer travels. Like they're instead like genuine opportunities to help and involve yourself into a community that really needs it. And making sure that professors like Professor Ruha Benjamin get a chance to talk to um, these students about the ways that uh, communities that they might interact to have been exploited in the past and how to stop this cycle of exploitation that we've seen and how to eventually like help not simply disrupt it, but also help um, these communities uh, recover from the cycle of exploitations that they've been exposed to in the past. So I think, yes, PIX does a good job of not simply challenging students um, mentally by giving them uh, the tools that they need to stop repeating cycles of exploitations within communities that they're getting involved into, but also PIX does a great job of making sure that these students are getting their work done, <laughs> at least from, uh, yeah, my experience, I would consider. Thank you. We have, an, uh, we have a couple of questions that are focused actually on finding the right match for a PIX organization and trying to figure out how to match your passion with a PIX opportunity. So um, Caroline, do you wanna jump in on that one for a moment? Yeah, that sounds great. I answered one question in the chat about this. Um, I think one of the things that I would say, I'd love to hear Rukia's thoughts on this, but I think it it's always stands out when you can um, not just look at the um, internship itself, um, you know, what's the opportunity? Will I be doing communications versus data analysis versus, you know, talking to people directly, but you really get a chance to dive into that organization's mission and understand kind of what makes them tick, what makes them what they are, um, and be able to write your cover letter, your application with that specific organization in mind, not just the work that you're going to be doing, which I think is a hard, I think it's a learning curve for students to understand, you know, what that reviewer is going to be seeing um, when they look at your application. If you can kind of look at their mission, look at some of the work they've done in the past and speak to how that actually matches your values and how that matches where you want to see yourself, you know, 
after graduation, five years, 10 years, um, that really sends a huge message to that community partner that you're going to be much better positioned to do that work than even somebody who might have greater technical skills than you. I don't know, Rikia, if you wanna jump in since you've been on that uh, side of the equation too. I would echo that. The one thing I would add would, is also uh, ask really good questions. Uh, we don't expect for, you know, uh, applicants to totally understand our business or, you know, or even understand like work. We often have interns who it's their first uh, position. Um, so asking really good questions that get at the idea that you, you have an understanding of what the work's going to be and what the mission is uh, and gives us a chance to kind of level set is really something that helps people stand out also. That's great. And we have another question that I think I'll broaden to um, be, especially, Dear Melissa, you talked about being a first year um, uh, PICS intern and going right out applying during your first year on campus. So I think there's a, a question about how well prepared are our, our students uh, that early on in their Princeton career for this first professional experience. So um, I'll ask Dear Melissa if you want to jump in again. And then um, maybe Duncan, I know you've also been a community partner and maybe you can talk about um, your experiences with that. And Caroline, if you want to end up with just talking about some of the professional development opportunities that PACE affords students throughout the process. Yeah, no, um, I think in terms of applying as a first year, I was definitely not ready. I came in and I wasn't really sure what an internship would look like because I've never done one before. Um, but I think that that's where alumni in the PIX community comes in because my alumni partner, uh, Mark from, um, I believe he was in the class of 77, Mark Brahaney and Dr. Rendleman from the class of 81. So Mark was my uh, alumni partner, but I met Dr. Rendleman at the dinner and um, they both helped me first uh, understand what it would, like what my role would look like in my community organization. And second, um, approached it in a, both a scholarly and also a professional way. So making sure that I wrap I ask the right amount of questions, making sure that if something doesn't make sense that I have someone who I can look into it with besides like my advisor. And I think that really helped shape my interactions with my community organization, both during my um, time with them and also after. Because do even now, like during uh, the pandemic, like Dr. Rendleman reached out to me and I was like, whoa, uh, and she checked up on me to make sure that I was okay. So. Uh, and so in terms of whether or not we're prepared as a first year, perhaps not. Um, it's a lot for us. Like it's oftentimes like the first time that we work an actual job. But I think that's where um, it's the job of both PICS and also the community partners, but and the alumni. And we're grateful that they step in and make sure that we're doing okay. Did you want me to add that now, Jen? Okay. So I think a lot of the things that Jeremy said is are right on. My advice to students would be that most nonprofits are small organizations, not all of them, but many of them. Um, and the good news about that is you have a tremendous opportunity to just kind of take things and run with them. Uh, the bad news is that there aren't a whole lot of kind of training programs and formality and, and your job description may be somewhat fluid. So when you're talking with an organ, I mean, first of all, I would think about whether you want to work for a smaller organization or a bigger one, because there are some that are bigger. And ours is smaller. And I would say from the perspective of a smaller organization, it's very helpful to know um, about the kind of independent initiative that you've taken, uh, either academically or otherwise, because that's the kind of thing that does very, very well in small organizations. So I know many of you are experiencing, you know, more independence uh, than you expected, especially being, you know, in virtual settings, doing a lot of uh, independent work academically. So I would say that highlighting um, your ability to be self-directed, to take initiative, to ask questions, all of those things are, are gonna be quite useful to organizations. And I'd like to echo the point about um, to have a couple of good questions about the work of the organization to ask because there's no such thing as I don't have any questions. If you don't have any questions, you're not a thoughtful candidate. And 
if you have questions about the mechanics of picks, I would not ask those to the host organizations. I would ask those to Caroline. She's awesome. She responds to emails at all hours of the night, at all hours of the weekend. Uh, she will tell you about the process, about navigating it. And in the conversations with the host organizations, I was really just focused on you know, the work of the host organization because the person you're talking to might not really know a whole lot about picks itself. That's great. Thank you so much for that. And I can just add really briefly um, for first years who are thinking about applying. I think I, maybe generally so you would disagree with me, but I think I would imagine like the hardest part is just knowing that the time frame is coming up like now because you've just started your semester. You're brand new, especially during this year when you're trying to navigate virtual classes and things like you've already got a lot on your plate. And I'm telling you, you've got to apply to PICS by December 12th. Like what? Or just, it's uh, December 7th. Sorry, I should say that correctly. Um, but it's it's early mid-December. Um, and that's a lot. That's a lot to take in. So, um, you know, to that point, somebody had asked in the chat um, if there's some Somebody who um, you can talk to about internships that are a great fit for you. That's actually going to be Rose Holton, our program coordinator. I don't know if Rose can show our video real quick and say hi, but she's fabulous. She's wonderful. She's happy to help students talk through any considerations they might be having as they're hi Rose, thinking about applying to PIX organizations. So I think as long if you've got PIX on your radar right now, you're doing it right. So I just say to any uh, first years who are interested, just block out some time on your calendar um, for the application to go live on the 30th to check our website after that and make sure that you know you're going to need to have all your application materials in. Um, by December 7th um, to have that. So um, our picks, all of our picks community partners know that they're not allowed to say, oh, I only want a, a junior, or I only want a sophomore. Um, these opportunities are open to everybody. And Rose and I will work with you to make sure that your application reflects the quality of work you can perform. Again, you know, so you might be um, competing for a PICS position with somebody who has maybe two years of internships under their belt. Doesn't matter if you can better speak to the organization's mission and the work that you're going to be able to do. You're actually going to stand out more than somebody who has those technical skills. And um, also, the Career Center is always so so happy to see students come through. Anybody who wants resume help, um, and that's something Rose can help you out with as well. Um, but oftentimes, the Career Center is just is um, look, is really excited when students come in around this time of year because so many students actually need this help um, and don't ask for it. So um, some great resources available for you and always happy to help. Thank you, Caroline. As anyone can tell, Caroline is super helpful and so engaged in this process. And while we could continue talking about picks of well into the early hours of tomorrow, um, I want to thank all of our participants and be respectful of their time. And thank you all for joining in um, to this webinar on picks. We hope that you will find an opportunity to create your own pick story and feel free to reach out to Caroline, to Chuck, or to any of us in this panel uh, for more information about how you can get involved with PICS and the greater issues of social justice that PICS supports. Thank you, be well, stay healthy, and as happy as possible.